I just took my own experience on the Wikipedia and I took my experience as a social worker working in um, the field of helping to deal people with mental disorders and put that together to this talk today. Um, yeah, so first, I want to know if there's anybody in this room that thinks he or she has a Wikipedia addiction. Hands up. <laughs> okay, how many of you have ever spent more time editing on Wikipedia than you originally wanted to when you started out? Mm, quite a few. How many of you think about Wikipedia when you are offline? Also quite a few. Do you sometimes get nervous, frustrated, restless when you can't get on the internet, when you can't edit on the Wikipedia? Hmm? Do people in your family, do friends or colleagues tell you to spend less time editing? Do they tell you, hey, stop that, I need you. And you say, ah, wait a minute, I just have to finish this. <clears throat> and do any of you ever lose sleep because of the Wikipedia? Well, actually, if this was done scientifically, I'd have to rate sometimes, often, very often, rarely. But it's this kind of questions, if you answer all of them with a yes, and if you think, oh yes, very often, that could be an indicator on a normal test on the internet about some kind of addiction, you would find then the advice, please talk to an expert. You are in danger of having a problem with Wikipedia addiction. I just made this up. I'm not the first person to think about Wikipedia addiction other forms of this kind of test are on the German Wikipedia, and I'm sure on other language um, Wikipedias, there's similar kinds of things, usually a bit longer, a bit more drawn out. But mm, these questions are, I think, the most important one to this kind of talk. But since there are people in this room who seem to have this condition, what is this kind of condition anyway? And is this condition dangerous? I think Wikipedia addiction is just a yet unresearched form of internet addiction. Internet addiction usually is described as being addicted to, for example, an uh, online browsing game. World of Warcraft was the first thing that got people to realize there might be something like an internet addiction. The first things written about internet addiction were pro mostly about people being on World of Warcraft. But there's also blogging, chatting, internet shopping, or internet pornography use that today are considered the main problems using the internet too much. The bad news is you can do all those things in a slightly different version on the Wikipedia. I think except shopping. But there are people who upload tons of pictures that get deleted with pornographic content. Not all of it gets deleted. And you can go and chat on the discussion pages. You can have a kind of blog on the Wikipedia. And of course, the Wikipedia is a kind of online role game. I don't know if your language version has a page that says, join this, these are the rules for the game. In the German Wikipedia, there are two pages like this, but yeah, there it is. You can do all these things on the Wikipedia. The good news is, even if you said, yes, 
I answer all these questions and I say, very often, it isn't necessarily a serious condition that has to be treated. Most, as I would say, unusual mental states of mind are only considered a health problem if they cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of fun functioning. I got this from the article about mental disorders on the English Wikipedia and taken from the DSM, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So, as long as you are still doing your job without having problems, as you still meet friends, you don't have problems with your family, it's not really bad. Hmm. Well, having explained this, I think it's not surprising that I think that there are people in the community that have serious problems caused by too much time on the internet and especially working on the Wikipedia. What should we do about it? I had some ideas, but you are all welcome to have more ideas and to talk about them. One is just to keep this in mind and to look out for each other. To sometimes talk to somebody and say, hey, I watched you editing an incredible amount of time over the last two weeks. Is it really necessary that you spend so much time on this project? It's a wonderful project we're doing together, but why don't you take a break? A good idea is to meet offline. It just stops being online all the time in a very effective way. Well, not always. We've met offline here, and some of us were online and offline all the time. But still, it's a good idea. Another very good idea is to remember not everything has to be done today. The Wikipedia will not be complete tomorrow, even if you hurry up. Take your own time in discussions. It gives you time and it gives others time. So you just are not feeling that much distress. And plan cooperative work on a generous time scale so that people do something else than just the work you are planning to do. Now, I said it's not just Wikipedia addiction, it's Wikipedia addiction and its comorbidities. I think that you don't get that much drawn into the Wikipedia that it gets really dangerous if you don't have some other issues. They don't need to be really comorbidities. I always put it up a bit high. But I think there are good reasons why some people spend too much time on the Wikipedia more than is good for them. So I do believe that not all that are very heavy editors have problems, but there are some of them that have other mental issues. And it's very easy to see if you just look at the figures. I mostly got them from the Wikipedia articles, but I checked other articles as well to see if they are realistic. There is a lifetime prevalence from between 65 and 85 percent. So that's the chance that somebody will sometime in his life have any kind of problem, any kind of mental disorder. So that's very many people. We can't expect that none of the Wikipedians have any mental problem. Anxiety disorders, that's all the kind of phobias and things, 10.6% in the year before the assessment was taken, not just in the lifetime. Mood disorders, that's all kind of things that have to do with depression. 4.1% for the major de depressive disorder, 2% for the dysthymic disorder, so that's more than 6-7% mood disorders. Schizophrenia, not so many. Personality disorders, one in seven, the last five years. Alcoholism, and I didn't put any of the other drug issues there. 4% um, around of the people over 15 years of age. Autism, Asperger syndrome especially. 
Not so many, but I think that's something else we need to talk about. I think there are some kind of conditions, mental states of being, where it's easy to go to the Wikipedia and feel welcome there, and I think that's one of the points. Um, and I do believe that post-traumatic stress disorder also is um, very important for difficult, oh, how do I say this? Um, I think that a lot of people that edit on the Wikipedia that have problems in this kind of, um, that have post-traumatic stress disorder can be very disruptive to the community because they will, if at the moment where they um, feel threatened, at the moment where they feel uncomfortable, they can be very irrational. So what's the consequence of this for the Wikipedia communities? We are all crazy. We are all insane. No, not all of us, but most of us. I think you already knew this. I didn't have to tell you this. But still, a lot of the time, we act as if we were absolutely sane, all of us. And we expect on a talking discussion page that everybody there is able to act rationally. Even if you don't have a mental disorder, sometimes you're not able to act rationally. If you've drunk a couple of beers, a couple of glasses of wine, perhaps you're not able to act rationally at this moment. If you have a very high stress level, you've had problems off wiki with your boss, something else with your family, perhaps you're not able to act rationally. So, not rational solutions to conflicts are a bit difficult if one or more of the persons in the conflict are not able to act rationally at this moment. So there are a lot of people, when rational approaches don't work, that try an emotional approach. And they try to make a connection on an emotional level. It's more difficult in the written language, but still, you can try to say, I understand, you seem to be stressed, let's get this on another level. But when we have people that have emotional disorders, that have problems in dealing with emotions, might be this approach won't work. And in addition, we have a lot of editors that are more vulnerable than others. Somebody who's ever had a touch of depression knows. It doesn't have to be a depressive disorder or something, but just a touch of this depression knows. There are times when a harsh word really causes you to flinch. And if somebody just says, oh, don't be that touchy, it doesn't help. It doesn't help at all. At the moment, you are vulnerable. And as I said before, the post-traumatic stress disorder, if you're touchy because of that, yeah, it doesn't help. And we do have these people, if you just look at the figures before, it's clear. And overall, it's not easy to deal with people who have such conditions. And since we have them, we sometimes need support and protection, either because we, as the editors, are vulnerable, or because we are dealing with somebody who is, at the moment, not acting rationally, not being able to communicate well on an emotional basis. So we all need to support each other and give each other protection in dealing with these things. I said this on a basis for the whole communities, but what does it mean for all of you, for me? We all are crazy, I said. So please, put yourself in the sanest state of mind that you can manage at that time before editing, especially in honeypots, especially in high conflict areas. Just try to sit down before turning on the computer and take a deep breath, drink a cup of tea. I don't know what helps you, but don't start off already on the highest stress level. Be aware, you may be as balanced and as smart and as well in your argumentation as possible, it may not influence the other person. 
because this person may not be reached at this moment with anything. So you only have a very marginal influence on the editing behavior of others. Still, you're always responsible for your own. And if a rational approach to solving a conflict on Wiki does not work, you just have to try something else. If the emotional approach doesn't work, you still have to try something else. And if nothing works, you should really, really look out for yourself. Go off Wiki. Watch some cat videos. Do something that makes you laugh. Change to another project. Go out, meet friends. Do something where you feel the time is well spent and that is good for you because no article, no picture, no piece of code, and no other content is worth you risking your own health or you risking my health or that of any other person on the project. So, this was a very quick go through. Are there any questions? Well, it's a little bit out of wiki question, but I have always uh, uh, such a question when I see statistics about how many people may have some mental problems. So then <clears throat> these numbers, of course, does not add up. I mean, for example, people having uh, depression might be alcoholic, alcoholics uh, might uh, have schizophrenia and so on. Uh, so, but my question is, how many people on average population are normal? I mean, have no mental, serious mental problems. <laughs> Yes, so my, I just changed the question to the with having no serious mental problems. <laughs> Yes, but just the, the, the secondary question to the, the first one is if we have some knowledge about what this uh, average amount in the general population of people having mental problems, serious mental problems at the moment, right, at every time. So then there is a question if uh, it's possible to measure if the uh, Wikipedia editors crowd in general have uh, on average higher or lower level of, 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 of this percentage. So it might be interesting to see. I, I don't know if it's possible to measure. It more probable. Thank you. <laughs> um, that people with a certain mental condition will find the Wikipedia a good way to spend their time. For example, if you're very depressed and you're really afraid to go out of the house because you think, oh, I just don't have the energy, there will be unfriendly people out there, all these things. Going on the internet is an easy way to interact with people and to feel valuable. You do get a lot of positive responses if there's a thank you, if there is somebody saying, wonderful, if you get a barn star. So that is something that might attract certain people. Um, but we are not sure. I, I didn't do any research, but there's somebody, I think, from the medical people. 
Um, no, I'm just thinking that, of course, there's a possibility of it performing such research on a wiki. But um, what uh, to take a general number from the population at large and to apply that to Wikimedians would also assume that Wikimedians um, reflect the population at large, which uh, we don't. <laughs> that is uh, um, uh, pretty well known. But uh, so it's possible we have more or we have less, but then there are also some things that um, at least anecdotally have come into uh, my awareness. I know that many uh, editors uh, started off being very active, sort of when they've been in between jobs, and there is a, there are correlations between un unemployment and depression. So I mean, there are lots of factors that you can uh, count in, and uh, so uh, it's a uh, it might be a field of study for someone. And I did this not to make you think the person next to me or the person that I'm having a discussion is probably having this mental condition. I did this to make you aware that it might not be able to solve this problem on the rational basis, or to realize you have to take into account that the person you are communicating with on Wiki might have more problems than you can see on Wiki. That was really the point I wanted to make and not to say this person might have exactly this problem. And it sometimes help, helps, it does help me to understand um, why my solutions that often work sometimes don't work if I take into account this person has a lot of other issues that I cannot address on Wiki. Hi, I'm uh, Mina from Greece. Uh, actually, I have been uh, working with mentally ill patients for the past six months in a program called Wikitherapy. Uh, I've been teaching them how to edit uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia in the general, the synecdoche sense. Uh, and I've been uh, cooperating with a mental health center for adults. It's a, like a day center, outpatient. They uh, go for consultants, uh, consultations with a psychiatrist, psychologist, and they have volunteer groups with cooking, with uh, drama, and wiki therapy was part of their uh, program. And I was very lucky to be able to have very close collaboration with the psychiatrist, psychologist, social worker, and nurse. And about what you mentioned, it was very true. Uh, when you uh, see that it's becoming an addiction, uh, do something else, okay? For me, it was not so easy to see that one of the participants, he was getting into deep because, okay, I'm enthusiastic about the Wikimedia project. We're the, I'm one of the crazy people, so uh, it's not easy for me to see that, but an outside observer uh, can see that this person, he's too obsessed, okay? It didn't come out in my, and, and he's trying to, um, uh, like, influence the rest of the group, saying, ah, I do this, I do that. It didn't come Help out. Help me in this project, yeah. <laughs> So it didn't come out in my group, but it came out in the other groups, and eventually it emerged in my group too. So I said, aha, uh -huh, they know what they're talking about. They said, keep him down, keep him on the ground. So what I did is I um, organized some uh, outings. <laughs> Editing, we went to the library, we went to the museum, we went to the state archives. Uh, he had his birthday party, he invited us. Like, more like socializing and interacting on a different level than uh, online. And it really works. And uh, it's, uh, it's rewarding in this way for all of them. I mean, so my understanding from you know, the addiction topic area is that people that have one kind of addiction are often prone to other kinds of addiction as well. So. Um, it's almost like a, a certain personality type may be prone to that. So they may be coming with an existing addiction and then kind of act, you know, fascinating it by having coming to Wikipedia. So I think that like th us thinking about that as a possibility and understanding the way we do things and encourage it could very well be um, causing extra problems for people and in their lives. So I think it's important for us to understand that as we design projects and. 
like I don't want to be a nanny of everyone, you know, um, you know, but on the other hand, I think it is important for us to understand that setting somebody up to be in a worse situation is not really a good thing for us to do. I met one Wikipedian who said, if I edit in Wikipedia, I know that's good for me because I won't do something else that's more harmful to me. Um, he is somebody who is often a bit disruptive in the German community, but I have real problems as an administrator to give him a ban for a week or something because I have this sentence in my mind. And I think that's the same thing. I don't know if it's another addiction he has, but he has a problem that he had that has nothing to do with the Wikipedia that brought him there. And, yeah. Um, I was wondering what your opinions are on setting up a safe space on Wikipedia or other projects for people who are having difficulties in their on wiki relations to sort of receive advice, encouragement, mentoring? Um, I, it's a very difficult issue to set up a safe space on the internet for people who have problems with internet use. <laughs> um, <laughs> but still, I think it's a very good idea to have people that can be addressed on this issue, people that can be addressed on the internet because that's the way people communicate. Um, what I experience in the IRC channel, I'm quite often in the IRC channel from the German Wikipedia, that a lot of people tell me about their problems if I give them any chance. And I was there for, I don't know, three days, four days, and somebody told me about what kind of um, pills he's taking, and somebody else told me what diagnosis they had. Um, so I think if there is a kind of space like this, it will be used. Yes. Uh, sorry, but uh, the time for, for question is over. Okay, thank you all very, very much.